Hello folks, this is Ashwin welcoming you to another video. So before we move on to the crux, I hope you have in mind what we discussed in the previous video. If you do, let us not waste any more time and let's rock and roll. We left off with the structure of the French society and how it led to the oppression of the common man. So moving forth, in 1789, the government had squandered almost all the wealth and summoned a meeting of the Estates General, where members of all three estates were present. King Louis XVI wanted to find a solution to filling up his empty treasury. However, the issue of how to vote became a point of difference. The first two classes were afraid in case the third estate managed to find more votes than the rest do then the privileges that they enjoyed until now would be threatened. However, the third estate was also fed up with the oppression that they faced. They were always made the scapegoats for any increase in taxation. When there was a deadlock in between the estates, the third estate decided that they had to take a decisive action. The members of the third estate assembled at the indoor tennis court of the king, vowing to stay put until they gave the country a new constitution. This became famous as the tennis court oath. Naturally, the king realized that the representatives of the third estate were determined. Hence, he appeared to relent to their demands and asked the other two estates to join them and find a solution. But in the background, he tried to make arrangements to crush this newfound courage. Classic villainous stuff, right? But somehow, the people on the streets came to know of the king's evil designs. They stormed the Bastille prison, the symbol of Bourbon tyranny on 14 July 1789, and unleashed their anger on the streets. The king was forced to abdicate. On August 4, 1789, the National Assembly decreed the abolition of the feudal regime and subsequently the declaration of the rights of man and of the citizen, proclaiming liberty, equality, the fraternity, the inviolability of property and the right to resist oppression. While we stop further discussion on the French Revolution now, I would like to state that the aftermath of the French Revolution wasn't quite pretty. This was because various elements in the population had various ideas and there was an absence of proper leadership. This ultimately led to a reign of terror under the leadership of a person named Maximilian Robespierre. He resorted to guillotines for eliminating any opposition that was foisted against him and his group called as the Jacobins. However, he was pulled down and finally he met his death at the same guillotine that had been employed by him to eliminate his opponents. Therefore, this widespread anarchy ultimately led to a soldier named Napoleon Bonaparte who established himself as the Emperor of France. However, what is important to learn from this revolution 